What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Uh, Daniel, thank you for becoming a member. Uh, how's everybody doing? It, it's still so weird to me. I know that we said we were going to start doing Monday streams, but because of my parents being out uh, last week and then some other stuff, this is only the second time we've done a, um, a Monday live stream. And so my brain is just confused because I'm so used to streaming at... Um, hey, Lisa, thanks for renewing your membership. Uh, hugs and cuddles for the puppies. They are pretty happy. I cleaned Delilah's ears like an hour ago and they both got treats. So they're they're they're, they're pretty stoked right now. Um, yeah, so this is the second Monday stream we've done since I announced it and uh, it just feels weird. I'm still trying to get used to it. And on top of that, the uh, TV up here is new for me as well. It's awesome because I can see everybody's chat, but it still kind of tripped me out. Anyways, uh, happy Monday. I hope everybody had a great weekend. This weekend was pretty low key since my parents flew home on Thursday. It was kind of like getting back in the groove of things. I gave myself a couple days off from video stuff other than the stream on Wednesday. And so um, it was a lot of hanging out. I actually, where is the thing I want to show? Here it is. Uh, so anyone that was on last Wednesday's stream, I started building this in the end and it, I failed kind of miserably on it. Um, I ended up reprinting out two of the parts and they had much better tolerances and I was able to get the Min Amame 3D printed headphones finished, uh, which turned out pretty sweet. Unfortunately, ah, this maybe right here. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get them to my dad before he had to fly home. Uh, so I'm gonna end up mailing them to him, but I'm really happy they turned out. They also sound absolutely awesome. So, uh, LT t-shirt, yes, it is an LT t-shirt. I ended up buying one of the water bottles um, some time ago and was like, I gotta get a shirt, and I love it. It's really comfortable and nice and long, um, which is usually a struggle for all the shirts that I get. Uh, what's up, BBs? Uh, I must admit, even though most of the time, oh, I'll miss about an hour, I love these Monday night streams. Yeah, it will definitely become more and more of a thing. Uh, next, it's still probably gonna be an every other Monday type thing. Hey, zombie, hey, sky down. Happy Monday, guys. Um, next Monday, I will be on the crop top stream. <laughs> next Monday, I will be on the Hot Makes uh, live stream podcast. It will be uh, the same time as this stream is today, except one hour earlier. So it is right now 5 p.m. Uh, what time is it? I, I still have clocks that are mixed. It's six o'clock my time, so 5 p.m. Pacific Standard. It will be 4 p.m. next Wednesday, and then, nope, <laughs> next Monday. Next Wednesday is our one year anniversary stream, uh, which will be at our regular time, which is noon Pacific Standard, which should be a very, uh, very awesome uh, stream. I'm really excited for it. I don't wanna say too much. It'll be hangout, pizza, some cool prizes, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So let me, I don't know if the, what is louder? I'm gonna drop this a little bit. It is screaming in my ear. So that is what is going on. Uh, same time, yeah, so next Monday, um, it will be on the Hot Makes channel. It won't be here, it'll be on uh, Hot Makes or Edge of Tech's channel. Um, and it will be one hour earlier than this. So right now it's 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That stream starts at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hey, what's up, Rob? So it should be a lot of fun. I was on the, uh, let me go back to me. I don't know why I'm showing this stuff right here. Um, I was on Heavy Metal 3D Printer Building. Yes. Uh, I was on the podcast last year, I think it was. Time's flown by, but it's a lot of fun. If you haven't seen it, it's every single Monday for an hour at the same time, which is 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And it's basically just highlighting awesome things going on in the community. Um, it just ended, I think, like right now, this week's was with uh, Breaks and Makes or 3D Maker Noob for anybody that's been uh, in the 3D printing YouTube space for a while. And it's just really cool. I like the idea of highlighting cool things that other people are doing in the community. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So if you have an hour next week, definitely stop by there and say hello. Um, so is there a metal mounting plate for the head of the second? Um, the plate is carbon fiber. So I was gonna show, I, uh, I cheated a little bit and uh, was looking at some of the stuff we needed to do for this build. Uh, so we're continuing the second build that we started last, wow, it wasn't last week, was it? It was the Wednesday before last week. Um, updates on that actually. That stream, we assembled this frame and after the stream ended, I took the entire thing apart. I was not happy with the squareness of the frame and I probably, assembled it and took it apart another three times before I got it to a place where I'm very happy with. I feel like this is harder to square 
than the typical aluminum extrusions. I don't exactly know why that is, um, but yeah, I'm very happy with it now, but I spent a lot of time uh, after that. Uh, you forgot the polymaker notification. Oh, thank you, zombie. Uh, first time I made it to one of your live streams. Excited to see how this build goes. I'm thinking about getting one to build into a high temp printer engineering materials. Nice. That is awesome. I was just talking to the 3D printing general. He uh, finished his uh, and was playing around with some of the clipper stuff. And so uh, I'm excited too. I'm very, very excited. Um, so I, again, did some prep work. Uh, basically, I took out all the linear rails last night. And these are not name brand linear rails. Like they're, they have the option to get high wind rails. Um, but basically when he reached out, I had said that I was fine with no name rails because that's kind of what I've been using for a lot of the Voron stuff I've done as well. Um, and so I ended up looking at these after cleaning them and there wasn't any inlet to uh, add grease to the ball bearings. And so I took every single one of these apart, wiped them down with IPA, submerged all of the actual bearing blocks in IPA. Um, and then I greased them, greased them like crazy. So uh, some of them are sliding pretty good now, like where I can just turn them and they'll slide on their own at least a bit. Uh, some not so much. I still think it's going to be fine and the more they kind of get worn in, I think some of the grease might still be in there. Um, but I did that last night. I didn't really feel like doing that on stream. I, it's just not exactly the most exciting thing. Um, uh, West 3D's custom CNA rails are amazing. Interesting. Uh, doesn't look like Voron supports high temp. Yeah, with the ABS parts, I mean, to an extent, but depending on what you're going to do. And it's really cool that this has a actively heated chamber. Um, so I'm sure it's going to be overkill for most things, but I'm excited to at least have it and see sort of how it does with just ABS and polycarbonate printing. Um, polycarbonate is so overkill for most of what I do, but it still will be fun to play around with. Hey, what's going on, Telly? Um, so I did that. The next thing I did was these are all the carbon fiber components. So they're actually, if you look at that, ooh, pretty actual carbon fiber that is, I believe, CNC milled out. Uh, there are six parts of it. And when you get them, they are uh, the ends of them, not a whole lot of fun to touch or work with. Uh, one, it basically says that they can split. And two, the carbon fiber is not great to touch, so it can make you really itchy. Uh, and so what they tell you to do in the build is basically go around the entire outside with some super glue to sort of seal it in. And I did do that off stream and I'm thankful I did because it was an absolute mess. Um, I have some sort of middle, uh, mid thickness, nope, mid thickness uh, super glue and I've got some very runny super glue. I, I couldn't get the lid off this. Uh, I had a whoopsie and it, it leaked and bonded to a two by four in the garage and I took some pliers um, and tried to get it off and just couldn't. So I ended up using the really runny stuff which I think worked quite well um, because it was easy to get around the outside, but it just made a huge mess. So I did those two things. Um, that way, if anyone's watching later on and wants to know, I did prep those things correctly. I just decided to do it off stream. Hey, what's up, do it? Uh, how are things? Things are going great. Things are going great. What's up, Nuno? Right, it's probably like fiberglass, which embeds fibers into your skin. Not a good feeling, same as nettle, yeah. Uh, glass fiber isn't fun either. Yeah, it's similar to touching like the insulation, right? That's in a lot of uh, houses. So let's go ahead here and pull up the build and kind of show, I also, oh, dude, the um, the opacity on this is still not right. Why, let's see. Uh, 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 order, transform, interfacing, scale, blending. Blending, is that it? No. Properties. I screwed around with the opacity on this. And so now when I'm on screen share, you can see through me. Um, oh man, I might have to put it off stream. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I don't know right now. Um, filters, color key, color what, defaults. I don't know, I'll play around it later. Sorry everybody, I'm gonna be a little bit transparent. Um, I'm always transparent with you guys, but today I'm actually transparent with you guys. Um, hey, what's up, Printed Vision? Uh, arm, my arm is not sore. I, the doctor wanted to give me a tetanus shot. I, I said earlier in Discord, um, I had to go to the doctor's. I just haven't been in years, so I went for like a general physical to make sure that, you know, I'm still doing okay. Uh, and he wanted to give me like a tetanus shot and some other shot. And I said, I will do lab work, but I do not want to get jabbed. Um, I don't think I could have lifted this printer. Honestly, last time I got a tetanus shot, uh, it was a long time ago. I actually 
I threw a marshmallow roaster into my toe, sorry, uh, TMI and graphic. Um, and I just remember like feeling like uh, a huge animal had punched me or kicked me in the arm. And I didn't feel like feeling like that today. I wasn't ready for it. So, um, okay. Anyways, so we did this last week. This is the frame. Um, and again, we assembled all this. The last part of the frame section was adding super glue to the ends of it, uh, which I did do. So we are completely done with the frame section. Today we are going to be doing the pulley sets and hopefully the Z axis. Um, so we'll start with pulley sets. And the thing I did uh, to prepare was I did already lubricate these. I actually couldn't find the um, tooth. So the tooth idler, oh, oh, interesting. It wants you to loop all of these. These were really greased. So I ended up adding uh, a bit of super lube uh, to the tooth idlers, but the F604 and the 604 ZZ bearings were incredibly packed and lubricated. So I did not do that and I'm not doing that. Um, I haven't done that before and it's never been a problem. So I think we'll be okay. Um, took a side gig cutting glass fiber. Ooh, that does not sound fun. Uh, I'm going to check out to fight with Amazon and get a shower. Have a great, ooh, man. Good luck, Daniel. Thanks for popping in and thanks for becoming a member. Uh, Wednesday, today's Monday. We're going to be streaming again Wednesday. So if you're on Wednesday at our normal time, I will be streaming then. I don't even know all the shots CNC. It, it was like seven. My appointment was at seven o'clock in the morning because we have one car and I needed Aaron to be able to take the car to work. And my brain does not operate that early. Uh, so I, I don't even know all the shots he was saying. I was just like, no, no, I'm fine. I'm good. So, all right. Um, so it says rear pulley sets and I've kind of already prepped all of this stuff here. Um, hey, G Funny, thank you for gifting a membership. Uh, Nuno, you got a membership. Also, hi, G Funny. I didn't see you in chat prior to that. <laughs> What's going on, man? Happy Monday. <clears throat> All right, so this is the first thing we need to build. And it says we need to prepare two sets of them. Uh, it says one secondary belt tensioner optional and the rear pulley housing. And they look like that. Uh, and that's where you can optionally insert that. So I will say like, I'm getting used to the instructions on here. It's just different than what I'm used to. The I got kind of really used to the Voron build style and then the Rat Rig V Minion with its sort of CAD videos and step-by-step -step made it really easy. Well, this sort of like, you kind of have to think a bit more about the build. Um, so I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> Hopefully I get everything right. Hey, what's up, Pi? You are right on time. So <clears throat> we are building two sets. So I think what we'll probably do is to start by prepping these guys. Um, yeah, these two guys. So let's go side camera like that. Hey, zombie, thanks for renewing your membership. What is maker deck? <laughs> I feel like that's a, um, I don't want to say a trap, but I feel like that's the, I feel like you've done that before. Or I've seen this before on other streams. Okay, so for this, it looks like we're just basically um, taking this part and we are, let me see, can you guys see all right? I don't know, it looks a little bit dark to me, but I, it looked blown out when I had more lights on. So we're gonna take two of these bearings, drop them in here, and then we need a nut to go inside of this nut trap, which hopefully it will. What is up with my luck intolerances lately, everybody? Um, I'm gonna run, okay, I can already tell. I'm gonna run to the garage and get my, um, not vice grips. Um, vice grips? Yeah, vice grips. And uh, pop this in. Well, actually, let me try one thing here, actually. Let's take these out, see if I can just use the granite top to help me pop it in. I feel like I'm gonna break it. God, I don't know what it is. Lately, my my printing tolerances just seem not very good. Bolt M4 by 25. Uh, let me confirm that I didn't grab the wrong um, nut. 
Nope, this is an M4 nut. <laughs> no, I didn't. I might need to, um, I might need to calibrate or I might need to print out one of those swatch trucks. <clears throat> it's so weird. So I printed it like this. So I guess there could be some definite sag on it. I wonder if there's just a direction. All right, I'm just going to go full send and hope for the best. Okay, it's kind of going in. Yeah, let me go get my, um, those vice grips and see if I can get this to pop in. Sorry, everybody. I didn't think I was going to need them. Should have known better. It's a 50-50 split as to whether this goes in and I'm happy or it just breaks the part. So everybody hold your breaths. Okay, it's going in kind of. Mm. It's nearly in. I'm not quite sure that it's fully lined up. Interesting, very interesting. Let's see, do I have a flathead that I can put some weight on? Okay, that is as far as it's gone in. I think we're good. I think that I can get a bolt through there. So let's try this. It looks like, yeah, two bearings. Oh, is this Sony camera? Uh, channel locks, channel locks, not vice grips. Thank you. <laughs> I'm still learning my tools. Okay, let me see if I go like this and I just turn off autofocus. All right. Now it shouldn't be tripping out, but it still might not be as in focus because it's probably focused down here. So. All right, now the magic. Will this go through? Okay, that seems like it did. But will it tighten? Let's see, drivers. How's everybody's weekend? I can ask that, it's a Monday. Hey, it's working. It's working. So I did get the nut in. Oh no, I cracked it. No, I cracked it. <laughs> Damn it. That's a bummer. We're off to an awesome start. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see if the other one's any better. Snapping the part off altogether. I might need to reprint these guys out. If we need, if I need to reprint these guys out, then we'll probably move on to, I don't know. I don't know what we'll do. <laughs> uh, they're printed in ASA. So part of the issue might be that I'm not entirely sure uh, that these are designed for ABS or ASA. So it'll be interesting to see how everything else sort of fits together. Um, I think that if you look at the instructions, let me see here. Second cube, GitHub. Yeah, so if you go here and you go to must, um, like this is the rear XY belt tensioner. So it says to print it out of PLA or PTG uh, and then use A, B, S, or ASA if it's enclosed, which ours is gonna be enclosed, which is why I chose ASA. Um, but I'm also wondering if they're designed to work a bit better with PLA or PTG. So, <clears throat> Do I have another one? That is the question. Uh, yeah, I probably should have scaled it up. Uh, yeah, 100. I think even just like G funny.
Let's see if I have another. I did print extras on a couple of these. Not because I knew I was gonna break them, but I just typically always print extras. So maybe um, we'll probably just end up breaking another one. Oh no. I'm not sure if this is one of the parts I printed or not recently. Hmm. <clears throat> Let me check one thing really quick here. Hey, what's up, John? Yeah, I have learned that I break things. Um, especially if a part is really small. Um, I'll almost always try to see if I threw one in the trash right here. Oh, I know that's the one I just broke. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I found it. No, I don't think I have spares. That's a bummer. Okay, well, what else can we do while we wait? Um, I don't really feel like printing out another right now. Huh. Okay. That puts a little wrench in my plans. Let's see. The axis. Attach the top pulleys from linear rails. The pulley housing prevents linear blocks from falling out. We can try to put the rails on without it. Um, let me... This totally stumped me. I wasn't anticipating to break the first part. Uh, 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 we can try. Let's see here. Let me see if I can find, I think the switch wire should be on the network still. Uh, I think this is the switch wire. Yeah, this should be switch wire. So what I can try to do is print out two of them. Um, I was just screwing around with the switch wire, so I'm not sure that it's ready. Uh, bed mesh state has been saved. Okay, we can save it. This is gonna be fun. Okay, so let's, let's get this heated up. I don't think I have this currently loaded in the switch wire. Actually, I might. Let me hit 250. I'll be right back, guys. Yeah, I figured we'll, we'll figure out something else we can do while we're waiting, but these are small enough that we can try scaling them up and seeing, seeing if they work. <clears throat> Mondays are full of surprises. Okay, sick. I've got the right material loaded in. Awesome. Yeah, I just moved the switch wire around. I was using it for a video, but it looks like it's already got the ASA I was using loaded up. So let's do, add it set to 105 for the bed. We'll start heating that. Uh, we will turn lights on so I can see in the garage. I don't know that I have my, uh, do I even have super sensor? Save on the idea of here. <clears throat> Uh, do you not calibrate part shrinkage in Super Slicer? No, I did not. I usually, in general, uh, do you have a VZBot to print? <laughs> VZBot's awesome. No, I um, I have not calibrated shrinkage in Super Slicer. Uh, uh, uh. It's also a bit confusing because I bounce between quite a few different 3D printers. Like this one, my switch wire profile isn't even set up correctly. It's set up for Marlin. So let's go Clipper. Um, let's see, retraction, two mil, two mil sounds like too much. Dropped one, let's see, we'll do 0 0.4, just a tiny little bit. <clears throat> Filament. Okay, I 
I think I was printing this ABS at 10 or ASA at 105 and 250. I know I had slight cooling on it. Uh... <clears throat> Uh, I use an Alter 2.4 profile for my Switchfire suite. Yeah, the Switchfire, I've, I've, I go back and forth with being happy with um, the profiles I've got for it. Let me see here. So they want you to use, let me make sure this is the right part. Yeah, this is the right part. Download, save, 100% infill. Which is also weird. I think that's also part of the reason why um, it's going to be interesting to see how some of these parts fit. Is that for the majority of the parts for this build, you printed 100% infill, which doesn't give you like any um, like correction. Normally, if you have some form of infill, if there's any sort of like over extrusion, some of it will fit in there. Uh, oops, I'm delayed. This is where you can set the shrinkage around 99.7 or 99.6. I guess. Uh, G20 said 100.5%. If we go the opposite direction, would that be 99.5 roughly? Or 99.6? I don't know, but the thing is though, I don't know if I want to set um, a scale factor permanently because sometimes like if it's made to be printed in an ABS, then it I have to remember to turn it off while if it's just the part I can scale it. I think I'm just gonna, um, I think I'm just going to scale in this instance, the um, the part. That is interesting. I didn't know that was even a thing. Uh, the grid is not supported. That's fine. Skirts too, that's fine. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. Mm -mm. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I printed these like this. And then I am pretty sure. Yeah. Pretty sure that's how I printed them. And then I had it bridge. I had it bridge that and then I did some painted supports. So I'm pretty sure I did. I don't remember. I actually don't remember. I printed these a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't remember if I painted or if I just said auto generate supports everywhere and blocked out the whole top. Let's see. Uh, supports everywhere. Let's see what it generates. Ooh, that is aggressive looking. They haven't added um, no support needed. <laughs> I uh, gotta look for a bit. Uh, no worries. Hey, um, what's up, Cheetah Kid? They still haven't added the slim auto generated supports to Super Slicer that I really like. Um, I'm going to block off this area. Generating a little bit of supports. It's still really thick support. Uh, actually, no. It's not too bad. We can try that. <clears throat> All right, let's try two of these. don't think it's going to copy over. Oh, it does? That I did not know. That's cool. Okay, well, that's good to know. There's been a lot of times where I've had multiple of the same part, and I just paint on supports on all of them. But if you paint on supports on one first, it'll copy it over to the next one. Um, speed, we can probably ramp up a bit. I think I have my speed set very slow. Uh, 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 yeah, let's do infill. Infill can be 150, perimeter speed. Uh, I'll do 120 for both of these. 
still print really conservative with this. Um, but it's been... It's been pretty reliable. Start printing after upload. <clears throat> <laughs> John gets around. All right. I am going to walk out to the garage and make sure the first layer is going down correctly. Then we'll come back in here and figure out what we can do in the meantime. I guess if nothing else, it's a hangout stream, but I'd like to make some progress on this. It was kind of the, uh, the whole point, but let me see. Let's see how this goes out here. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know what I did not do? I did not scale the parts, which was the whole point of... All right, pause. Stop. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I'd like to blame it on Monday, but I think if this was Wednesday stream, I would have done the same thing. Okay, so the whole reason we're reprinting this is because the tolerances are too tight and we need to scale, uh, scale factor. We are doing 105, bam, we're deleting you. Did that delete my paint on supports or are they still there? They are still there, that's magical, all right. I would have been really bummed if, I don't know if I would have been bummed or if I would have laughed if, um, we had done this and then I realized I never scaled it. Okay. All right, new point of action. <laughs> Wait, oh, I didn't. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Slow down. That is a big difference. 100.5. Thank you, everybody. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, now we should be good. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> it's a Monday for sure. All right, let me check and see if it started printing on the last one and remove any filament on the first layer, then I'll hit print again. Yeah, 105% is a little, uh, a little different. Oh yeah, I did start printing. It was looking pretty. It was actually looking really good. <laughs> uh, monkey's looking at me with judgmental eyes he always does all right we are back in business hopefully let's do this let's start the print <laughs> okay now let's see if we can do something here so it says attach the z pulley housing before linear guides. So technically we shouldn't do that yet, but it does say it's to prevent the blocks from falling out. So which makes me wonder if we can just install it and I can leave the block on for now. I think we try that. <sighs> uh, American schools don't teach decimals very well. <laughs> Uh, different stream schedule. I'm gonna lay down. We'll still be listening, just not chatting. Good night, all, and hope to see you Wednesday. Hey, sounds good, Alien. Thanks for stopping by, man. Okay, let's try this again. So, doing everything backwards.
Yes. What are we teeter tottering on? Okay. So, first thing we're going to do is make sure that I've got all the same size linear rails. So, we're going to be installing it right here. Is that in focus? Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, so there's one, two, same size, and three, all the same size. Okay, all right, so it says for the front ones, we need MGN 12s, 250 we got, M3 by 10s. Okay. Bolt and washer. So I'm assuming M3 by 10s. 10, 10s. Three by 10s, okay. It says three bolts will be enough, which seems a little bit low to me. But I guess we can start with that. Normally I do every other. Okay. Looks like, looks like they have holes for one, two, three, four, five. Um, but we can start with, I think we'll start with four. Yeah, we'll start with four. I'm sitting on my bed at 1.35 AM, not tired of my laptop, too cold in my office since all the heating is off. Oh man, I actually just ordered a space heater um, today. Okay, for this we're just using... Seem like really small bolts for this, but... Yeah, I ordered a space heater today for the garage uh, this morning. I wasn't cold, it's not cold, it was 70, 70 today, but I can just tell like winter is going to hit quickly, so... Uh, first snowfall. Where uh, we're at, Rob? One thing I wish is that there was more images. So rails here. Uh, there's no image of the backside of the rail. What is this? This is for ACM panels. Okay, so bolts going forward. Yeah, I'll do my best, I guess. I just, I wish there was like photos of both sides. So there's a, there's a CAD drawing of it, you know, but it would be nice if there was also kind of a photo of what's being described. Right now, I'm just gonna loosely put these on. I'm gonna go around to this side, let's see here. Oh, Alaska, geez, that's me, wrong shot. Best Discord site, Modbot Army. <laughs> Thank you, Skydown. I appreciate the plug. Okay, so we're gonna start with this top one and it's going through. I'm just gonna loosely fit everything. So we've got washer on backside and we've got nut on backside. I'll tighten these after. I guess right now I'll just kind of use my hand to fit them in place. Thank you to everybody that uh, caught me typing in 105% instead of 100.5. I, I can tell you right now, there's no way 
that I would have noticed it or thought of it. I was, oh, or did I think of it? Did I catch it? I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I did. Either way, thank you. <laughs> Chat in general has saved me from a lot of silly mistakes on stream. Um, yeah, so there's another hole right here that I don't think fully aligns. Does it align? No, it does. Interesting. It just seems off pattern. So I'm gonna go with four, four bolts per linear rail for right now. Um, there's, it looks like a total of five optional, but we'll stick with the four that are spaced out evenly. The bolt goes through there. I guess it makes sense. The snow will hit in UK in two weeks time. It's interesting. The weather here, when I looked at it while my parents were here, said that this week was low 50s. And I don't know if it was a glitch or if there was like a storm coming that just decided to take a U-turn or what, but um, the weather now changed to where it shows like mid, oh, this is a janky washer. Uh, it shows like mid to low 70s, which is really, really comfortable. Oops, washer's on backside. But because of the fact that I saw that cold weather, um, I wanted to at least start preparing for it, especially because a lot of the stuff I'm doing right now is out in the garage and the garage gets really cold. Okay, so for right now, these are just hand tightened in place. Um, although they're pretty damn tight, but I will use a needle nose ply or something like that afterwards to grab the nut on the outside. But I just at least wanna, at least wanna get them in place. America getting snow, it will come to us in the UK. My family is all in Oregon and all I've heard is 70s. Yeah, um, that's what it shows right now for the next, I think like seven to 10 days, which is really nice. All right, so let's go like this, turn this around. I had everything laid out so nicely for today's stream. I was like, we're gonna need these parts, that part, and this part, and then that part cracking. And now I'm just like, all right, well, we will do what we can. All right, here's the next rail. And then we're using the same parts, which are all over here. Washer, nut. There we go. John, you're in the U... Uh, we only get snow in the Sierra Mountains here in California. You're in California, John? I swore, I swore for some reason that you said you were in the UK in a past stream. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know why this beat, this song, reminds me of Peanuts, like Charlie Brown. I have no idea why. I don't think it's a remix from Peanuts. Where are you at, hole? <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'm from, oh, okay, gotcha. I was like, I know the UK is tied in there somewhere. Gotcha, it's from the UK, lives in California. What part, um, been here, oh wow, since 98. During winter, don't have resin printers out in the garage. I think that the piano has a peanuts jazzy feel. Okay, cool. I was gonna say, it just, I don't know, something about it. I could totally see this in the background of a peanuts. Um, 
the I'm curious to see how the uh, Pia Poly Phenom Forge does during winter. Um, the one that we built on stream, um, gosh, I I would say probably three or four weeks ago now, because it has the heated vat. But yeah, I would imagine that non heated resin printers are going to really struggle um, in that the resin is just going to be much thicker. Uh, I could see snow from my back deck over the weekend. It's crazy. I'm excited for snow. I um, just want to be ready for it, I think, more than anything. <laughs> Just, I've never lived in snow. So, you know, we visited snow um, for a lot of my life. Like, snow wasn't far away. We could drive 45 minutes to an hour up the up the hills or up the mountains. Uh, but to live in it is, is going to be a little bit of an adjustment, um, I think. And maybe not even just that, but just sort of the coldness. Because even when there's not snow, if it's 30, you know, 30 degrees out, that's that's new to me. Okay, so these still need to be tied more, but we've at least got two rails on. And we're leaving the stoppers on. Someone remind me the stoppers are on. Um, if you can, when we get to the point where things are actually moving, uh, there's definitely been at least a stream or a build where I never took the stoppers off and tried to home the printer, and that was fun. <laughs> okay, so for the back rail, it says MGN, so same rail, same bolts, but two of them need to go through the rear panel. Okay. My concern is My concern is if I put the back panel on, will I be able to install the pulleys later on? Thirty C's hot. Wow, what part of the country are you in? I, I'm in Idaho. Um, we just moved here June of this year from Southern California. It's been it was hot for the first two months here, and now it's like it's been beautiful the last couple of weeks, like mid seventies. But I know. Winter's right around the corner. They just turned off our sprinklers and um, blew out the sprinklers. So it's it's definitely coming soon. <clears throat> okay, attach the Z-top pulleys. Two holes were missing. This is for beta kits. Yeah, so it's showing the CAD of just this part, but this is with the whole assembly that's supposed to be installed there. At least that's what it looks like. If you install the Z-Pulley housing here. You know what? I think we can probably install these without everything else right now because Looking at the pulley sets, they kind of just drop in from the top. And I, it looks like I should be able to access these from the top and I can shove a wrench in down here to tighten any of this stuff up. So maybe we will install just sort of the bare um, metal pieces and install all the components onto them after. Let's also see, we're 31% done with the printed part. Realized again, I'm not screen sharing. Um, these parts, so like, this is what I'm reprinting out right now, right? The, these guys. Um, but it looks like if I install these brackets, it shouldn't be an issue to build these on the machine after. Um, it seems fairly open top and bottom to be able to get my hands in and just sort of slide these in place. So I think what we might just try to do is um, install them as is without any of the stuff on them. 
So Z, Z top pulley, if you install the Z pulley housing here, the X-Rail will touch it when moving. All right, I'm gonna do my best. <clears throat> so it looks to me, it looks to me like these guys go, nope, that doesn't look right. Hey, what's up, Jason? This is definitely my favorite time of year. Yeah, it's beautiful. The weather is so nice. You just wanna like sit outside all day. Okay, so this is what needs to get installed. Z top pulley housing. Is there a picture of that anywhere? I don't think so. No. Okay. So these are rear pulley housings. Belted Z pulley sets. Okay, this is that. And this I can install after. Left and rear Z. What does the right one look like? Okay, so the right one, all right, all right. Let's install these right now then. So it's these guys. <clears throat> Be a lot of bouncing back and forth here. And I'm assuming it looks like for pretty much everything, bolts go towards the outside. I don't see any image of it after. Yeah, bolts have to go towards the outside. All right, M4 by 10s and phalange nuts, which means the nylon lock nuts. So let's do this, we'll do our best. Um, I think these are the M4 by 10s, these are the phalange nuts, let's double check. Uh, why is he talking about printers on this weather stream? <laughs> That's exactly right, this is the weather stream, sir. Sir or ma'am. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Mitchell? Happy Monday. Okay, so I'm going to do what I think is correct. And it looks like this goes like this. And the bolt goes through here. There's no mention of needing washers. So we'll just go through like that. And... Drop the nut, oh, of course. Oh, that's why they're so long. To actually get to the nylon portion of these lock nuts. And then the holes on these parts I'm installing are slots, which makes me think that maybe they're gonna be used for tension. Um, so right now I'm just gonna build them pressing downwards toward the linear rail, which you guys can't see. I think it'll be easier to show once I install it. Let's go right here. There we go. Uh, 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 one more of these lock nuts. Is anybody in chat um, that was at Murphus last weekend? Yeah, once I tighten this up, I'll turn it around so we can take a look at what exactly I'm talking about. Not Murph, did I say Murph? Earth, Earth this past weekend. Uh, needle nose pliers are where we should do. Clamp this in place.
All right, that's locked in place. Uh, yeah, I was there Saturday. How, how was it, Rod? It looked awesome um, from the photos and videos I saw online. Okay, so this is the part. Let me see here if I tap right there. So this part right here um, is what I'm installing and there's three of them. One goes on each side. I believe this is what's going to be holding the um, idlers or the pulleys and there's slots on them. So right now I've got them where they're as far down as possible. Um, so it would be the least amount of tension because I'm assuming that this is uh, like the reason they're there is for a tensioning method. So later on, I'll probably need to loosen them and then tighten them up a little bit. But for now, I'm just gonna install them towards the bottom um, and we'll do the exact same thing to the other side here. is right here you guys can't see that let me move you guys a little bit ah. let's see right about there a little dark i think the camera is gonna have a hard time finding that but there you guys go a little bit of light uh death racers were awesome yeah i was blown away by just how many Death Racers there were. I'm sure Polymaker um, sponsoring Filament definitely helped. But yeah, it was very cool. Cause I, I saw them when they launched at Murph. And I think there was only like four or five of them basically. It was like Wolfsbot had one, Edge of Tech had one, um, Joel had one, uh, Sam had one of course, since he is the creator of it. Um, where are the, there's one here. Let's get these loosely in. But yeah, the designs are just so freaking cool. Okay, so I need one more lock nut. Should be out here somewhere. I definitely prepped for this, but with how much things, have, oh, there it is. Twenty twenty seven entries. That's awesome. I'm hoping someone will organize barf. <laughs> I, I've seen that. Um, I don't know who it was that was saying that. I don't know if it was Steve um, from the Warren team or who it was, but I, I saw someone talking about <laughs> barf. <laughs> the name that is truly repulsive. All right. That one's in. Um, you know what, while I'm doing this, I might as well tighten up the uh, linear rails, the two that are installed, otherwise I will forget. And the lighting is rough on this, let's see. That looks a little better for you guys. All right, that's good. And let me flip this around. <clears throat> well, I'm at least glad we we're able to do something today. Make some progress on this because I've really been wanting to make progress. Um, we took the break last week from this um, because I want to do the headphone, the Hedamame and Minamame build. But generally I don't like taking breaks from builds. Um, just not the way my brain works. I kind of like to see things through and then move on to the next thing. But uh, next week, Wednesday we'll be building this, uh, continuing on with this. And then next week's Wednesday will be the 1000, nope, not 1000. It will be the one year anniversary stream. Um, so we won't be working on this, but I am really excited for that. Awesome. Okay. 
So we've got those in tight. We've got those linear rails in tight. Now we probably need to put the back panel on from what I'm seeing. Let's move here real quick. Uh, I met Steven Taylor at Earth. Uh, I've been the one talking about barf and other people are picking it up. I don't know of anyone that came up with that name before I did. But I met Steve at OC Maker Fair. I flew down for that one. Nice. Yeah, I'm sad that I lived literally in Orange Um, oh, Aaron's home. Monkey's so excited. Um, that I lived there for so many years and they didn't have it. And then I move and three months later they have an Orange County Maker Fair. Hi. I, I uh, cracked the first part I touched. I snapped the first part that I touched. Yeah, that's what I said, no. I had everything laid out nicely and the first part broke, so it's reprinting in the garage and we're working on other stuff. Yeah. Later. Success? Wow. Mm -hmm. Nice job. <clears throat> Pi says hi. Hi, Pi. Uh, I meant both of them also. Nice. Okay, so we have installed that on both sides. <laughs> Chat says hi. G Funny says hi. Buddy. I don't know if you guys can hear. She says hi. Hey, Luke. I didn't even see you in chat. How's it going? Uh, figure supper. Good luck with supper, Rob. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for stopping by. Okay, so my concern is, I don't know. M3 by 15s through the rear ACM panel. Okay, I think the answer is I need to grab the rear panel uh, trying to get back into routine after the last two weeks. Uh, what happened in the last two weeks? <clears throat> All right, let's see if I can find the back panel. And I feel like if I line, if I line the back panel up, I should be able to get an idea of what it's going to cover. Wow, this looks, I guess it is a pretty, geez, this pin is trying to kill me. Okay, uh, back panel has a slot on the top middle of it. So not you, not you, not you, maybe you. No, it's gotta be this one with the fan on it. Yes. Um, used to live in Idaho Falls, great in the winter with trips of snow. We'll be, oh, that sounds so fun. Um, Idaho Falls was actually the other city um, that we were debating on when we ended up choosing Nampa. And I'm glad we did as far as just like central location um, and having like Boise close by for family, which is really cool because my parents just forgot this last week. But um, Idaho Falls being so close to Yellowstone or if you want to do a trip to like say Salt Lake was definitely a big uh, appealing factor. and. Going snowmobile sounds awesome. Well, Laptop making any noises and creaking. When I, ooh, that's not good, Cheetah. I don't have a hard time calling Virginia at my brother's. Oh no. Jeez, I'm sorry to hear that, Luke. Yeah, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know you were. Yeah, I'm really sorry to hear that, man. I'm glad to hear she was able to have the surgery, so and I hope that you know recovery is as quick as it possibly can be.
This stuff is stuck on super hard. I think with the noise filter, it won't be too loud for you guys, but if it is, I apologize. This is aggressive. Ooh. Huh? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I thought you said something. I couldn't hear you over my tearing. Oh. This is the opposite of ASMR. This is aggressive R. Um, all right, peel the back side of this. Come on, dude. Wait, unless, no, no, this side needs to peel as well. It's like maybe one side is white. I really never know how a stream is going to go. Um, like a lot of times you just kind of go for it, right? Um, just go live, know the thing I'm going to do and try my best <laughs> to figure it all out. Um, but this time last night I, I couldn't, I was done with what I wanted to do and um, thought to myself, I'll prepare like, you know, what will be, I'll make things go real smooth. I, I'm very confused as to why this is not peeling. Um, is one side white? Is that possible that one side of this is white? It shows white here, but it looks like they didn't peel it off. No, there's no way, there's no way. <clears throat> uh, she's doing well and recovering fast. She's home from the hospital. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Hopefully that allows you to, like you said, kind of get back on track with her things. I, I'm very confused, guys. It feels like I am peeling away at things that don't want to be peeled off, but I've never seen one side that would be white and one side that would be black. Does that make sense? <laughs> Slightly at a loss here. Um, I don't know. We started, so it's seven o'clock here, seven o eight. Um, I would say about another hour. Are you heading open the office? On the tank, one side is white and the other side is black. Oh my god! I have a feeling that's exactly what's going on here. <laughs> All right, well, so I was peeling away at the laminate layer. Beautiful. Okay, well, we are going to do black inside, I think, um, and white on the outside. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I, I, I have not used panels that are too colored. Uh, are you heading home? G funny, is that why? Just to see if uh, I'll be streaming when you get home. I have a feeling I'll be streaming for like another hour-ish, um, but probably not super long today. I'm going to leave. I'll check out the rest later tonight. Yeah, sounds good, man. Um, I think I might have a pretty hard cutoff of like 50 minutes from now, just so I can eat some food and hang out with Aaron for a little bit. But uh, regardless, we'll continue Wednesday and I might get some of the pulleys prepped off stream just to make sure that I'm not going to instantly snap them or at least check tolerances before then. So. Uh, I put black inside, white outside of mine. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do as well. <clears throat> but we'll see. Maybe I'll be streaming. I just, I don't know. If I see you later on, uh, I'll see you later on. Otherwise, hopefully Wednesday I'll see you, man. Okay, so let's go to... ACM panel. M308, four of them. Okay, so I'm assuming it's these little those bolt M3 by 10s, M3 by 8s, washers. 
Have a good night, man. Okay, so. Let's try to get this back panel on. Okay, we've done that for each three bolts to hold them in, linear guide of the frame, linear guide, bolts through the ACM panel. Okay, I think I've got this back photo right here. Oh, you guys can't see this, but this back photo right here should really help. Um, let's grab the bolts, M3 by uh, M308 and M310s. Um, and then what kind of nuts? Just regular M3 nuts. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> you missed me snap apart literally instantly, dude. Everybody say hi, uh, hi 3D Print General. He just finished up his build and his is alive. I was talking to him earlier today. But yeah, the, um, so last stream, I started with the frame, which took the entirety of the stream. And so today, I was working on putting the pulleys together and the M4 nut, the second I inserted into there, it just broke, dude. Um, <laughs> what, out of curiosity, what material did you go with, Pierce? Did you go with ABS or ASA or, or what did you go with? Because I went with ASA and I think part of it is the shrinkage factor. So they're reprinting right now at 100.5% to scale it up a little bit. And now I'm kind of jumping around trying to get some stuff done um, okay, you did, oh, so you did ASA too. Did you scale anything or no? You just printed it at 100%. Because I had a hell of a time getting that uh, M4 nut in there. All right, so let's get six washers and six nuts. So we got one, two, And the bots are back. Uh, I printed on the actively heated Quiddy iPass. I'm not sure if that helps uh, the shrinkage. Okay, just 100%. Yeah, I'm curious to see how everything else turns out. I don't normally scale. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't normally scale for ABS. Usually, I feel like I can get it to work. But no, the um, the nut. The second it went into that nut trap or that pocket, it just cracked the part. So we'll see. Also. Um, I do my best to not get frustrated. Like things go wrong all the time, especially on live stream. I usually just laugh at myself. Like it's kind of, um, it's kind of all, all I can do. Let me see, uh, report user, right when G funny leaves the bot, uh, the bots come report. Uh, thanks, cool. It's interesting, the last two weeks the bots have been worse than ever and I don't know why. I do have to admit I broke apart trying to fit in a five millimeter nut into a holder that was meant for a four millimeter. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, you should see last week's stream, man. I was building 3D printed headphones and I put, like instead of putting the earmuffs um, like one inward and one inward for like a normal human, I did both of them in the same direction. I, I don't know what, I, I just wasn't thinking in the moment, but it was it was a major, um, <laughs> this is a major laugh moment. Okay, so M3 by 10s are right here. And we need how many of these? M3 by 10, two of them. And then we need four M3 by eights, which I don't think I've pulled out of the box yet. So let's do, let's do that. Uh, one thing I did not do with this build too is just organize things. Like I, I was kind of hoping by just taking them out, is this M3 by, yeah. By just taking them out and kind of lining them up, it would be okay, but I, I probably should have printed an organizer for the hardware, because there's a ton of hardware. All right, so one, two, three, and four. And what I do not know is, 
where I need to bolt things into. Let's go side cam. Uh, I do have to admit, uh, kill the bots, BRB. Let's move this like that. Okay, so as far as mounting points, it looks like two down the center. It's really tough to tell. Um, so this must be a mounting point, and this must be a mounting point. But what I don't know is, let's see, does this picture get bigger? It does, cool. Okay, so. Okay, so that's the, that's the end of it. So it seems like for just about everything, other than the, the frame screws, that the screw head's always gonna be coming from the inside towards the outside. And these look like they're probably gonna be the M3 by eight. Also, this song is, this song is killing me a little bit. <clears throat> Go to 8-bit. Okay. So these are the smaller screws. You're the smaller screw, you're the smaller screw. Let's try this, so. Right. Washer. Okay, I'll just loosely get these on for now, so that way the panel doesn't fall off. Be right back to you. Okay. Wish me luck, John. <clears throat> there we go. You guys can't see this, but I'm doing the exact same thing I did a second ago. Uh, speaking of ye old chip tune music, finally picked up another. Dude, I was gonna try and give him a try to my phone a shot. Nice. Finally picked up another. Are you, Jason, are you doing a lot of. Um, you are doing a lot of audio creation from scratch, right? But is it any of it this style? Okay, so it looks like this is going to be another spot where the bolt goes through like that. Don't fall off, please don't fall off. The, the screw only sticks out just a hair, so. Also, why is this not flush? Hmm. It's just gotta bend to it, I guess. But once I once I bolted everything in place, it should be fine. Uh, where is my small driver? There we go. Uh, I've really done any chip tune stuff. I've got a couple, um, a couple things. Approximately, new disco, one track that's kind of synth wave, and another sort of thing. Things. Tripping out. There we go. Uh, I can shoot you a link on Discord later if you want to dive. Uh, give it a peek. Yeah, send me a link later on. Once this is done, I'll probably hang out with Erin for a little while until she goes to bed, and then probably be back working on some other stuff. Right here. 
All right, um, grab my needle of those pliers. I'm gonna try to tighten most of these things up as I go. Um, so the further I go without tightening things up, I'll forget. <laughs> and then later on I'll go back and be like, why is this loose? Cool, so those are good. It just has a bit of bow to it. Um, oh, interesting. There is, um, anything? I've got water, I've got trail mix. I think I'm okay. Thank you. Is the, uh, uh, I'm kinda hot. Should I open the window? Okay. Yeah, I'll open the window, I'll be okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, what's up, tripods? I've been watching either either yours or Sam's Twitter feed as you guys have been doing your world tour. It looks like you guys had like the most fun week ever, man. <laughs> All right, um, so there is also bolts on the bottom um, that I don't think are pictured. Basically, one and one. Um, but what I don't know is why... The thing I'm not getting right now is for the back panel, it says we need four M3 by eights. And I just used those, one, two, three, and four. Um, and then it says we need four M3 by 10, no, two M3, you guys can't see it. Two M3 by tens and I'm wondering if the M3 tens go, uh, excuse me, um, go on the very bottom, but there's also no image. I just don't, I don't know. Mm, 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 mm. We can try it. I just don't know why, like, is it just to make it easier to feed through or what is the reason? Hey, what's going on, Steve? Uh, there will be more small clips. I'm looking forward to it. Oh man, I wish I could remember the step to help. Uh, let me look on mine. Yeah, let me know if the bottom ones on yours are different because I just don't understand. Um, like, let me see here. If I take another M3 by eight millimeter screw and I pop, pop it through the bottom here. Maybe it's because it's like near impossible to actually get your fingers in there. It is actually really tough. Um, yeah, I just can't, other than it being difficult to actually get your fingers in there. Um, nope, it's thicker. That's why it's for the bottom. It's a hundred percent for the bottom. The, for some reason, the bottom, it must be, the metal must be thicker down there. Or it's the way that it bends. Okay, that makes sense. So, I guess I could show it, but basically the way the metal bends over right here, you just need an extra four millimeters on the screw to actually get it to pop out. Chilling in my hotel room, flying back tomorrow. Dude, it looks like you. everyone had such an awesome trip. I was just telling Tripods that like him and um, Sam's videos on Twitter have been hilarious. And I saw that you guys went over to Printed Solid, uh, which is freaking awesome. I would definitely love to go check it out and um, especially see like the filament lines. Okay, so where are the two slightly longer bolts that I had put out? They were here, I'm smashing them. There we go. But yeah, um, Earth looked freaking awesome. All of the photos I saw, it looked really busy. 
It looked like there was a bunch of cool stuff. Okay, I'm just gonna do this part having it laying down, guys, but I'm doing the exact same thing I just did a second ago, except with a slightly longer bolt for the bottom because of the way the steel sticks out differently. Great to see and meet everyone. Who, um, who ended up winning the Death Racer races or the battles? I do remember having a lot of not speed difficult to reach. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, when I was just assembling the frame, I was like, oh my God, how do I, how do I get my hand there? All right, I'm tightening this. I can actually probably turn the camera a little bit to show you guys. Like that. Do the same thing. So there's a tiny hole on this side. A bolt's gonna go through. Jeez. I don't exactly have the world's smallest hands either, so it's makes definitely might need to use uh, tweezers at some point in this build. Um, mine broke in half. Oh no! <laughs> went out in a blaze of glory. Complete opposite of your uh, <laughs> eraser at, at a Murph. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna try to go next year. All right. Nut is nearly in. We did it. We're done. Just kidding. All right, at least back panel is on. And because back panel is on, I believe we should be able to install some more parts on the back of this. Uh, there will be videos coming out awesome. Yeah, I don't think anyone's done any coverage. I know that like Sam and Nero did the little walk around, but because of how bad the Wi-Fi was there, it was pretty tough to like really watch. Second day was repaired um, and oh, nice. That's awesome. Did you bring one, Steve, or no? You built one, right? I, I'm nearly positive you had built one. Okay. So back panel's on. Um, do we want to do bottom panel yet, or should I wait until we do everything else? So weird. I don't even see. I don't even see this. Um... <laughs> What's up, inappropriate? Um, how's it going, man? How many port swipe pairs are at this point? Uh, one, two, three, three. Three sounds right. Uh, V zero, V zero, and the X one carbon. Um, is there any else? I've got the core XZ, which is the switch wire. And then everything else is bed slingers. I actually have a video coming out this week where I talk about bed slingers and core XYs and the majority of what I own is still bed slingers. I've got two deltas, three core XYs and probably like, oh man, uh, probably like 12 to 15 bed slingers, give or take. I, I I'd have to count all of them. Uh, I think I came in second on the speed race, nice. My biggest, like, I know that they're built to battle, but with, like, I don't know, putting out all the parts and stuff, I would rather race them, I think, than destroy them. Um, even though I'm sure it's tons of fun, but I feel like after spending so much time on putting it together, tripods here look awesome, too, with the uh, hydro dipping. Yeah, so the thing that's tripped me out right now, though, on this is that on mine, that's me, um, if you're looking at the back of this thing, watch. What's your lineup uh, right now, Inappropriate? I know that you have the Ender 6, and I know that you have the Switchwire um, that's heavily modified. That's thing is for the win. I love my Dalton Quirks. Why I still fit more in my artillery and Prusa. Yeah, that's a big thing that I talk about in the video. Um, I don't want really to give away too much, but I think it was a fun topic, just kind of exploring the current state of bed slingers right now. Obstacle would be a ton of fun. Uh, I'm sure the design will evolve and get easier and easier to repair after any carnage. Yeah. 
So looking at the back of the panel, this right here is where I need to mount something. But the thing that's throwing me off is on the picture here, there is just, there's no holes. Like the holes are missing altogether. Um, Please expand the four holes to 10 millimeters so the bolts and the primary shock can touch the hard surface. Okay. I don't see that part mentioned at any point. I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. Uh, is this Stream Beats chip tune? Um, it is Stream Beats. What is it? Uh, chip, is it chip tune? Oh, great. G uh, good album? Pixel, it looks like it's called Pixel, the album. Yeah, it is, Pixel. Hey, I always see your streams, I'm recommended. I uh, thought I was top by. How long has it taken to build so far? Um, this is second stream. First stream was probably three-ish hours on the frame. Um, and then after the stream ended, I took it apart like three times. Um, this, for some reason, like I, pretty much every printer I built from scratch, other than back in the days where they were like laser cut and acrylic, has been aluminum extrusions. And for some reason, um, this steel frame, I had a hell of a time getting it squared. No matter what I did or tried, it was I had some wobble in it. So I took it apart over and over again until I was finally able to get into a place where like there's no wobble in it at all, uh, but it took quite a lot of work. And then today, uh, I had everything laid out really nicely, prepped to kick some serious butt, and then the first part that I grabbed, I broke. <laughs> so uh, we're probably four-ish hours into the build, and we pretty much have frame, um, two linear rails mounted, back panel, and that's kind of it. Um, honestly, a big part of what's taking me a while is that the instructions just are kind of confusing. Um, they sort of bounce a bit. I only use the bottom two holes. Uh, show your printer again. Wait, you didn't use these ones? These ones are for mounting, um, like, or for the heads of this crossbar. I don't know how well you can see it because it's not focused on manual. But yeah, the instructions are really what's kind of taking me because I'm, I'm having to like triple check to make sure I'm looking at things correctly. But yeah, these bolts right here for this T rest in there. And it looks like, um, what the hell is that part? This guy, oops, is what needs to mount just like the other ones right here. Um, but the screw length, I think, is going to have to be longer. But I just don't know. There's no mention of it. I, I can leave it off altogether, but it's needed for the belt, so it's just... Mm. <laughs> Uh, the bottom two are for the pulley. Sorry, hard for me to see with the printer against uh, my wall. No worries. Yeah, I just, I don't see what bolts I'm supposed to use. Uh, I mean, I can just guess, I suppose, unless there's another section that shows them. For the other ones, I used M4 by 10s, um, which we can try. Uh, um. I just, I think the, I think the metal on the back's thicker, so I don't think it's going to work with the same bolts, but we can try. Um, let's see, what about the ones? These are five by 15s. Is yours printing? Um, did you get it sliced up in printing? Where's the five by 10? Mm, 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 mm. 
Okay, these are the 4 by 10s Something tells me this isn't going to be the right size, but we can try it. Uh, I'm literally about to start a print. <laughs> Alright, man, I will throw up a prayer to the printer gods. No, it totally does work. It just, it, I, so, the bolts that you use for the other two are the exact same bolts you can use for this one. It looks like they just forgot to mention it, but I'm gonna go with the exact same, um, which is an M4 by 10 with an M4 nylon lock nut. So let's get these installed. Maybe. Hmm. It doesn't want to fit where the cutout is. So it looks like these should be plotting into here. But the holes aren't big enough. Hmm. I'd rather not take the whole thing off, but I also don't want to crack it. Uh, that is right, M4 with the big M4 nuts. Did yours fit in? Um, mine won't fit in with the back on it. Uh, Cheetah gets out the guy. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Cheetah. Have a great night. Uh, there are bigger plans for Death, Racer, oh, oh, Death Racers from Earth and Earth for next year. We will be more organized as well. Awesome. I will definitely have mine built by then. <laughs> it was Originally, I was prioritizing it um, a bit more. But um, since I found out I wasn't going to be going, I'll leave you fix the area. Thank you. Uh, you can face it like me. You can force it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it just feels like... Because these are... This is why I thought there was a cover on here because it just has some imperfections and I thought that it was a, I thought this was supposed to be peeled off, but it's not. And it just looks like it wasn't drilled out big enough. Um, I'm scared of breaking it. If it didn't have, if it didn't have the washer on the back. Huh, I might have to take these panels off and drill through the panels to make them larger. It's likely what I'm going to be doing after stream then is drilling it out. Um, it is better with the window open, babe. Thank you. I feel much better. It was getting really hot. But yeah, basically these are supposed to slot in here and there's just not enough space. So I will very likely take the panels off after, take a slightly larger drill bit and see if I can just... Yeah, it's not going in, dude. Oh, that's a bummer because it kind of stops what we can do. Um... It looks like the belt tensioner finished printing, so I can grab that and see if that will work. See if you can go the opposite direction, slide the bolt in from the back and not on the inside. My only concern with that is if it's going to interfere at all with if it's going to interfere at all with the um, pulley. Um, let's see. Hey, if you have not, smack the like button, pretty please. <laughs> Supports the channel and I really appreciate it. Um, so, let's see here. You know what? 
That might work, dude. If I go the opposite direction, because basically having this piece of metal on the bottom, there's not much that can really um, go in there. That might be the answer, is just to go the opposite direction. Maybe that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I just don't know because it doesn't, it doesn't show. Uh, Steve Builds was here. I don't know if he still is. Yeah, let's try that. Let's go opposite direction then. Because that will fit. Maybe that... For all I know, maybe that is what you're supposed to do. It seems like for most of them, they're going the, op the other direction, but... Yeah, for this part, I don't see that being a problem. I just it needs to be called out. But we'll rock that and see if it uh <laughs> see if it causes any problems. Oh, Steve took off. Uh I must have missed it. Yeah, he he did stop by. He's still in uh Is it Maryland, right? I think Maryland's where where Earth was at. Yeah, if I can if I can just swap directions like this and have it not be an issue, I would much prefer that over um, uh, over taking this whole thing apart and drilling it. He sensed I was coming back. <laughs> Sorry, John. All right. Clamping this down. Sweet. All right, well, that's in place. Thanks to uh, 3D Print Generals much easier idea than mine, which was taking it apart and drilling the damn thing. So now, I believe we can install the last rail on the back. Um, let's see. Okay, rear rail says five M3 nuts. Is there even five holes? One, two, three, four. We count four holes. Um, let's see, where is... Is this the right size one? It should be the shorter one. Yep. Uh, did I sit on it yet? I have sat on it between the build two weeks ago um, and today. When my parents came over, it was sitting on the ground. I just kind of sat on it. <laughs> but it's not exactly comfortable. <laughs> Okay, so if I line this up, wait a minute, does it real not fit? Okay, so I need to loosen this top guy. What is going on here? <laughs> yeah, rail goes there. All right, loosen bolts again. Now this should be able to, yeah, that can lift. Now rail should be able to sit flush. Okay, so there is one that goes through the rail, two that goes through the rail. Uh, three that goes through the rail if I remove that one. And then there are three, no, four smaller holes. Uh, hey, what's going on, Ed? Yeah, that was my experience. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I did it. it it's very sturdy, um, but not the most comfortable. 
All right, let's look at the back photo again. I just don't fully understand. Okay, so for the other ones I used four M3 by 10s, cool. M3 by 15s are the ones that need to go through the ACM panel. So did I goof? Is that, is that what I did? Because according to this, only two of them need to go through the panel. No, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do at this part. One, two, three, four. I can guess, um, it's very well what I might do. I just don't understand all these parts. Hey, what's up, Christopher? All right, I'm gonna go grab the parts off the switch wire and see how they turned out. But yeah, I'm a little stumped here. Um, it just, it calls out for six bolts. Uh, front, rear, six bolts. Three there. And two there, no, five bolts. Okay, so three and two, five bolts. And there's like seven holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just don't. And this is gonna block. So th this is gonna block this one. One will go through, two will go through. Maybe three. Yeah, I'm not fully understanding this part. All right, let me grab the fully printed parts. Take a break from this. Uh, section, I might have to sort of analyze it a bit more or look at other reference photos because it's just the directions don't really align with what I'm seeing. So, we're right back. <clears throat> I got my mic on. <laughs> the printer's kicking my butt. Okay, cool. I'm going to stream for a bit longer and then Probably not too, too much longer because I have a feeling I'm going to have to like analyze it. Just what I'm seeing in front of me and what some of the instructions aren't exactly aligning. So I'm going to do some further digging. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Well, these parts look better. These do look a bit better. Will I break them? <laughs> Still, I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, I, I think on this back rail, I need to um, hop over to like the Facebook or something like that and look a bit more because it's just not, what I'm seeing in front of me is not aligning with um, instructions. Will the supports come off or will they break? Will they break everything? It definitely doesn't feel like the support settings are super dialed in. Uh, Dink's still streaming. Yeah. I'm getting closer to calling it for the day. Um, we made some progress, but I have quite a few question marks. Um, the back rail is throwing me off. Um, I'm hoping that these parts we reprinted are good. Um, we'll find out in a second. I'll try to put that same nut in that broke the first part, but 
I also don't think I've got support gap super dialed in on this pro Uh, how are the instructions compared to Voron? I see, I'm too far from the build plate, but I'm actually nice. Happy to help uh, via DM anytime where I get some picks. I spent way more, I'd like to admit, on trial and error on this build. I appreciate it. I am, um, because I'm going to be streaming again on Wednesday. So on that back rail, I'll probably hop in the Facebook group um, and ask. Because it's just, yeah, the picture. Uh, the instructions, the instructions are definitely not as kind as the Voron builds, um, zombie. Uh, the versions are definitely different. Like it, it seems like quite a bit of the instructions might have been done with a beta version um, that's had changes to it, which makes it interesting. <laughs> And then there's, it seems like there's a few things that just aren't mentioned, period. So you kind of have to guess or assume. So I think the instructions definitely need some work. Um, like, based on, so far, it seems like it would be a printer that someone would build that's got a lot of experience building printers or tinkering. Um, that's the vibe I'm getting so far. I have a feeling the end result is gonna be awesome once it's all said and done, but yeah, the instructions. Um, to I was talking to 3D Print General earlier and hearing his experience. Um, mine seemed to definitely mirror that in that it's just, it's a difficult build. Part of it is also like, I've gotten quite familiar with the, oh man, this part, I think turned out actually good if I don't break it, getting these last bit of supports off. Um, I've gotten quite used to the way the Voron build guide is, I feel, because that's the primary printers, I've, you know, with the two V0s and the Switchwire, I've built three of them now over the last year. And so I've kind of gotten familiar with the way that they call things out and lay things out and the rat rig wasn't bad either up until the wiring. Wiring was rough on the rat rig. They just kind of um, didn't do much with it. But yeah, it's been tough. Instructions on clear accident. <laughs> the VZ bot looks sick. I think I wanted to see more foolproof frame designs. You mean, wait, you mean like this style of frame design or something different? the last piece of support on here that's yeah I'm not sure the, the bottom bit of support is being an ultimate jerk I'm gonna need a welder for a full proof. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like either one piece or very rigid IQ style install. One piece is so tough though, just because of shipping costs. Like I feel, yeah, I think I need to reprint these parts. The top turned out great. Let's, um, nothing else, cause these are quick prints and I can run these shortly here. Um, these M4 bolts. I want to confirm that these nuts will fit in without me breaking it. Let's if if we do that, I at least feel like we've we've made a little bit of progress. The bottom part, so like top support came off fine. This was just bridged. Um, you can't really see it that well, but that was bridged. There's a little bit of droop, a little bit of droop there, which is fine. But it's the bottom supports that were built off of the actual printed part. I need to increase that gap. It still feels like it's going to be a stupid tight fit. Let me confirm that I'm using the right nut. It should be an M4 nut coming from the M4 bag. Also, let me grab 
There's a little bit of droop on this part. I'm gonna try to clean off the X-Acto and just see. As long as this tolerance right here, this is the only one that's really an issue. So as long as I can clean that off, I'll just reprint it with better support settings. Stupid tight. Still feel like I'm gonna break it. Um, let's see if I push it on the granite. Ooh, felt like it went in a little bit easier. Uh, how much are you using your Prusa minis? Very little. Um, yeah, very, very little. I don't think they're bad printers. Um, I didn't have the best of experience with the one that I bought used, which it was a very early, um, it was a very early, wait, isn't there supposed to be a hole? Okay, that was much easier though. Um, I think my settings are fine. I just think I need to tweak the supports a little bit on here for the bottom. Make the gap a little bit bigger, easier to come off, but I think that that might be success. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the minis are just kind of chilling. The the first one that I got, like I said, I had problems with it. Primarily, it printed PETG like a champ, but PLA it was just struggling with. And then I got the second one um, that I actually bought new last Black Friday, so pretty much a year ago. And at the time I was planning on starting up some kind of a print farm again, which just never happened. And so it's kind of just been hanging out. I um, I think it's okay. I, I think it's it's okay. Like if you're someone that doesn't really want to tinker, it's not a bad machine. But I don't. I wouldn't say that I love the Prusa Mini. I, I just think it's okay. I, I I'm also not. I've never necessarily loved cantilever style 3D printers. The KP3S and the V Minion have really won me over. Um, but the Prusa Mini also. I don't feel like it's the most rigid design. Like it took me quite a bit of. Uh, disassembly and assembly and running like the virtual or visual bed mesh to get it where I was actually somewhat happy with it. It just, it had slop um, because of the way that the Z axis attaches to the Y axis or the X or yeah, I guess the Y axis slash frame. So yeah, but it's, yeah, it's very wobbly. I agree. Um, again, I, I still think that with the mesh correction and all the other stuff that it's a fine 3D printer, but I'm just... The MK3S Plus has definitely impressed me more, and it's an 8-bit older 3D printer. It just, it feels much more... Um, it feels like much more perfected, while which it should be, given that there's been, you know, MK2, MK2S, MK3, MK3S, MK3S Plus, whatever. I don't even know all the different versions. Um, while the Prusa Mini, I still feel like it has a lot of potential. It's nearly there, but there's there's some things, especially with rigidity, that I would like. I would love for the Prusa Mini to not be a cantilever and for it to be almost like a mini MK3S Plus. And I feel like they probably can't um, because of pricing, but I think that that would be amazing. There's a Prusa Mini Bear mod that looks incredible um, that I think would really sort of upgrade the Prusa Mini to a bit more of a workhorse, but a lot of people love them. I know people that use them in farms, so, but in my opinion, I don't think it's a bad printer. I just think it's, it's okay. It's an okay printer. Uh, it's not a strong frame. I love mine, but yeah. Yeah, I think that the mesh works fine and the um, Super Pinda is great now. And, and there's a lot of other worse options out there. And if you kind of just set it and let it do its thing, it'll, it'll be fine, but I just, it doesn't blow me away. I just think it's it's a if you've got you know 400 bucks to spend, it's not a bad option as long as the print volume is sufficient for you know whatever it is that you need. Uh, very much love the KP3S. I'm actually going to go over all the faults of the KP5L tonight, and hopefully King Room will watch. Ooh, I'm I would love to see your feedback on that. Um, I don't think I can watch the live stream, but if it is, um. If it is something that will be available to watch like on demand, I would totally put that on tomorrow. Let's do the Bear Mod Mini. 
that could be fun. Um, the the one that I bought directly from Prisha, I think I'd like to keep stock, but the one that I've already reprinted a lot of this stuff for, I've basically rebuilt all the printed parts. I wouldn't be against modding that one into a Bear Mini. I put a Mosquito on my Prisha Mini on day one. Oh my God. <laughs> of course you did, inappropriate. Prisha printers aren't designed for exotic filaments like PLA. <laughs> I missed both. Those are great comments. Um, I bought a super pendant for a minion, but haven't felt the need to put it on. I don't have a leveling temp issue. Is your minion enclosed or no? Because I also never had issues with leveling on the original uh, Prusha mini, but everyone told me that the Pinda was gonna be problematic. So I bought the super Pinda and because like, because I bought it and it showed up, I was like, well, I'm gonna swap these. I spent the money on it, but I, I never had issues. Then again, I primarily used it for PTG and PLA and never enclosed it. And so I would imagine enclosing it could in introduce a bit more variation in terms of the temperature, just sort of causing issues with the reliability of the Pinda. That's kind of, I, I think the key difference between Pinda and Super Pinda, right? Is that Super Pinda has a thermistor inside of it that it uses for additional feedback. I'm almost positive. KP3S is my only working printer. <laughs> nice. Uh, the Union's not enclosed. Gotcha. Well, it's indoors. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so I think we're going to call the stream for today. I, I'm i happy we made some progress, but I'm a bit bummed that that part broke. I mean, it is. It's the way it goes, right? Like, it... Yeah. Better now than after it was on the printer, for sure. Um, I'm going to schedule Wednesday's stream tomorrow. Wednesday's stream will be at normal time, which is at noon Pacific Standard Time. Um... Three out the Z height in a second is officially printing. Woohoo, thanks for your help. I'm going to go watch it <laughs> and be happy. DM me anytime I can rest your stream. Awesome, man. I'm stoked to hear that yours is, yours is up and running. Please send me a video of it in action. Um, but I think between now and Wednesday's stream, I'm going to get these pulleys um, reprinted with the support um, settings dialed in a bit better so I can remove them without completely deforming the look of the part. Um, and I'll probably assemble the pulleys and mount them on here and then ask for um, either ask or do some more research on how this needs to get bolted. The back linear rail is throwing me off. And so hopefully by Wednesday, we can kind of pick up from there and start working on um, the X, Y plane. And I'll share like anything that I learn between now and then or, or um, do, I'll show at the beginning of the stream. That way, if anyone does build this in the future and they get stumped as well, they can hopefully use these streams and learn a little bit or, or not get so much, um, so many roadblocks, if you will. Uh, night everyone got electronics mounted in the Trident now onto wiring. See you on Wednesday. Hey, congratulations, Delmar. That's definitely like a, a major pat on the back when you get, when you get all electronics mounted, it's like a one step further. Uh, get all reprinted. I don't want to enclose the minion as it is PTG parts, mostly a few ASA parts. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm going to be reprinting the tool head. Uh, my video on the V Minion will be coming out next, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. And I think it's a really solid printer. Um, the, the build itself, like the build of the machine to me is awesome. The build process, um, the wiring and the electronics box needs some work. And I also wish that the parts were stock ABS or ASA. The fact that you have this sort of side enclosure for the electronics and power supply makes it the like a perfect setup for enclosing it for ABS and stuff like that. But because it's PTG, it's like, it doesn't like, I, I don't know. I, um, there's a lot of good, but there's a couple things I would like to tweak on it. Um, towards again, mostly the electronics side of things. So, all right. Pretty sure Ernest will take your feedback and update the instructions. Yeah. I, I really want this to be as successful as it can possibly be. Like it's, the thing that when Ernest reached out about this, the reason why I was excited is that it's just different than much anything else I've seen out there. Like the primary printers people are building right now are Vorons and Rat Rigs, which is awesome. They're, I love the Voron printers I built. I love the ones that I've seen that I haven't built and the V Minion has been awesome. But the idea of having other cool printer builds out there is something I think that's super exciting. And I just like that this is kind of a like, weird different style printer like it, it's so 
yeah, the, the main thing so far for me has just been instructions, really. Like, I don't think I've got any issues with any of the components. Everything so far has showed up and seems fine. It's just the instructions need more if a non-person that sleeps, eats, and, and does all things with 3D printing wants to build one of these. I think that's sort of the biggest thing. Um, keep three SI Z rails, putting on make a deck right now. 48 noise, I'm going to integrate these guys over there and try it once. Anyways, on that note, I hope everybody has an awesome uh, Monday night or Tuesday morning, wherever you are. And again, we'll be streaming Wednesday, regular time. Uh, next Monday, I will be a guest on Hot Makes, which should be super fun. And then next Wednesday is our one year anniversary stream, which will be a ton of fun. Super chill. Um, I'm quite literally going to have pizza delivered and uh, there'll be some giveaways. It'll just be kind of like a fun hangout stream that I'm pretty excited for. So I hope everybody again has a great night. If you have not, please smack the like button and uh, yeah, I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye everybody. Have a wonderful night.